Douglas, who will be traveling to Florida for the uh, McDaniel, uh, McDaniel, and this is my wife's family, uh, family reunion uh, this coming weekend. Uh, so be in prayer for us as we travel. And uh, we have a number of uh, of our families who are traveling. Uh, the Bacchus is out of town today. I believe Brother and Sister King are, are still out of town today. Perhaps there are others uh, who are traveling as well. So let's be in prayer for all of those who are traveling uh, and who will be uh, traveling. Brother Carlton Davis is requesting prayer. Uh, he is uh, having eye surgery on tomorrow morning. So uh, let's be in prayer that all goes well uh, with his surgery. Brother uh, Percy Smith and Sister Ryan Burks uh, are not feeling well today. Uh, so let's be in prayer for them, for the health that they will feel better and soon be able to be, be back with the family uh, here. And then we want to uh, lift up Sister Triplett uh, and the Triplett family uh, in prayer. Uh, just received word this morning that uh, Sister Triplett lost her grandson uh, in a motorcycle accident in Indianapolis uh, last, uh, last week, I believe. So uh, certainly want to keep Sister Triplett and the entire family lifted up uh, in prayer. God is still able. He is still well able. So we, we want to uh, lift up the Triplet family uh, in our uh, prayers. And then we certainly want to continue to be in prayer for this nation. All the things going on about us, uh, we need God's, uh, God's grace and mercy. Each and every day, so let's continue to be in prayer for the war in Ukraine. That God will bring about peace uh, in that country. Uh, that the hearts of those who seek to do such evil will change. And then all of our brother, our family, as a whole, particularly uh, those who are going through health challenges and our mature members, uh, let's continue to uh, lift them up in prayer. Uh, that God will continue to keep them encouraged and that we will, as their extended family, uh, continue to be a source of comfort and strength uh, and encouragement for them. Uh, go with us just now as we uh, go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious God, our eternal Father, we are indeed grateful for Another manifestation of your love toward us because you touched us with the finger of your love yet again on this morning. You kept us through the night. You protected us. And Father, you blessed us to be able to uh, arise from our sleep uh, with the movement and activity of our minds and of our bodies. Uh, you were able to wake up get up, to move about, uh, to go about this day. More than that, Father, you blessed us to find our way here, to worship and praise and adore your holy and divine name on this first day of the week. For that, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done and continue to do in all of our lives, for blessings that are physical, we are especially thankful for those blessings that are spiritual. And we especially thank you for this privilege that we have to talk to you in prayer, to pour out our uh, various petitions before your majestic throne. And Father, we thank you for having a listening ear uh, who is always uh, ready and willing to help in times of need. Uh, if we ask according to your will. And so we come this morning on behalf of those who have uh, made their uh, requests known. Uh, Father, we uh, ask your continued blessings on behalf of the Piggies and the Brown family. Uh, 
during the loss of Sister Peggy's mother. Uh, as she was funeralized on yesterday. Father, please comfort them. Lift them up. Give them strength. Bless them with healing and comfort and grace. As only you can. And Father, we ask that you bless us as extended family uh, to be a source of comfort and strength for them as they go through this season. Father, we pray the same for Sister Triplett uh, and the Triplett family as Sister Triplett has lost her grandson uh, tragically in a motorcycle accident. And Father, we often struggle to try to understand why these things happen, but Father, you have given us the assurance that uh, you don't give us more than we can bear. And Father, we know that in the midst of this difficult trying time, you will give this family, and we ask especially that you give Sister Trippett the strength to uh, bear this burden and bless us as extended family to help her to bear this burden that she won't have to bear her own. And Father, we ask that you bless this family to continue to look to you for strength and guidance uh, during this time. Father, we uh, pray for Sister Tanisha Joyner uh, as she has undergone testing for her health. And Father, we uh, ask that the test will be favorable that they will she will receive good results, uh, that you will continue to bless her health uh, to be good, that you that you will continue to bless her to be to remain strong. Father, we ask your blessings for uh, Brother Percy Smith and Brother Ryan Birch, uh, both who are uh, out uh, with health concerns, not feeling well on today. We ask your blessings for them that they will soon be able to be back with the people of God in this place. And Father, we pray for Brother Carlton Davis uh, as he will undergo eye surgery on tomorrow morning. Guide the surgeons and all who will be a part of that surgery. Uh, that the right thing will be done the right way at the right time. Uh, that the surgery will be a success. Uh, and that his health will continue to be good. Father, we pray for Brother Floyd Tate as he uh, prepares to travel out of the country uh, this weekend. Bless him with travel and grace and all those traveling around him. Uh, that they will be safe, keep him safe in his destination, and then bring him back home safe uh, at the appointed time. Uh, and bless him to find all well when he returns. Father, we pray the same for him. Uh, Jackson family, myself and my wife, the Ford family, and other family members of the McDaniel family who will be traveling this weekend for a uh, reunion. Father, bless us with traveling grace that we might reach our destination safely. Keep all those traveling around us safe. That all will arrive safe and sound. Keep us protected and safe while we are there. And then bring us back home at the appointed time uh, to find all we are. Father, we, uh, we ask uh, your blessings for uh, this nation as we uh, are encountering so much evil among men uh, in this society. Father, please move in a powerful way. Turn men's hearts from hatred and evil taking of lives. And help us, Father, to uh, fear you and, and have a desire uh, and, and help us to value life and love and relationships. And help us, Father, to strive to do the things that you want us to do. Father, we ask that you be with those in Ukraine. Please, oh God, Comfort those who are uh, in the midst of war. Protect them. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Be with the leaders of Ukraine. Guide them. Give them insight and wisdom. Uh, 
help them to know the right things to do. Father, for neighboring countries, the leaders of those countries, uh, bless them, Father, uh, to assist in uh, whatever way they can, help them to make the right decisions, uh, and help them to do the things that are right and pleasing to your sight. Father, more than that, we ask that you please change the hearts uh, of the Russian leaders who seek to do such evil. Uh, that they will have a desire to refrain and allow the citizens of Ukraine to return uh, back to some normalcy of life. And Father, I pray is that ultimately the peace will prevail. Father, we ask you to be with this Boulevard family as a whole. We all stand in need of your blessing. We need you every day and every hour. So we ask you to please just come by here and bless us right where we need to be blessed. We especially ask that you be with all those who are sick and infirm among us. Uh, particularly, we ask that you be with our mature members. Please strengthen them, uh, hold them up with your mighty arm, and bless us as extended family to continue to be a source of strength and encouragement uh, for them. Be with us now as we prepare to uh, go into this worship service on this morning. Assist us uh, in removing all of the distractions that might hinder us and help us to focus solely on giving you the worship that you desire, that is, in spirit and in truth. May we be edified. May the devil be horrified. Most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. In the name of the mighty, uh, matchless name of Jesus. Him who died on Calvary for the sins of the world. In Jesus' name, let us together say, Amen. Let the church sing.
in this case, since they want it by the way, it's good. So the public prayer of special prayer by our men and women for food and armed service throughout this world. We ask that you to keep your loved ones protected around us. Allow us to do the job and to show us any interruptions. We pray in the Father for those who are traveling. If you allow them to arrive at a destination safe without any hurt, harm, or damage, we ask you to be with those in the Father's way of hospitals and care facilities, as well as with the doctors and nurses that are caring. Be with the medical father, allow them to retain and be eased in the father. And that we, we ask and also in the father that you be with our children in the father who are definitely our future grandchildren. We set the example for them that they definitely are our future. We pray the father that the word that we'll be seeking shortly may be able to take it out into everyday lives. And that others may see how uh, see our good work in the father. We ask in the father that we be able to show you Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask that you go with us and remain part of the worship service. Hope and pray that everything that is said and done today will be pleasing and accepted unto thee. Even our prayer for our son in Jesus' name. Let's together say, Amen. You know, Stand still and see. 
the salvation of the Lord. And sometimes when life gets so crazy, sometimes we just have to stand still and see and let God triumph. Because ultimately, he will triumph over trouble. Amen, somebody. That's because he's good not just some of the time. But God has shown up to me all the time. And we, we ought to be grateful for this blessed privilege that we have to be called the children of God. Always good uh, to be with the people of God and the house of God as we attempt to try to do uh, the will of God in this place to all of our guests who might be visiting and worshiping with us in person and virtually. Uh, you are a very special uh, guest. We are honored by your presence today. We will recognize you uh, personally at the end of this uh, service. Uh, but we just uh, say to you at this point, uh, welcome. Happy Father's Day. Again, to all of our fathers, uh, I know it ain't high on the list. <laughs> my, my wife and I were laughing yesterday. She said somebody had posted that, uh, she saw where somebody had posted that, that fathers uh, can eat free on Sundays at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A ain't almost something. Y'all got jokes. That's all right. Brothers, we're going to get our due one of these days. If we don't get it, then we get the glory. Amen. Amen, somebody. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, but again, to all of our, all of our fathers, uh, we thank God for you. Uh, for a few minutes, minutes this morning from the text that was read into your hearing, just a few thoughts from this text as we try to encourage our fathers uh, and perhaps even challenge us uh, from this text this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, the verses or 13 through 16. Ye are the salt of the that the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salt? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light. All of that in the house. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Which is in heaven. Verse 16 again. Let your light so shine before me that they may see. This thought for a few minutes. The incredible impact of a father's influence. The incredible impact of a father's influence. Good to go there and see love. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. You can certainly give our love, sister love. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Someone once said regarding influence, we reform others unconsciously when we walk upright. Whether we realize it or not, all of us are impacting someone else's life somewhere. Uh, either Positively or negatively. 
rappers are influencing young boys and girls to be rappers because they see the images of them being surrounded by stacks of money, cars, and jewelry. Professional athletes are influencing youths to strive to go to the NBA, NFL, or Major League Baseball because they see the fame and fortune. CEOs and the heads of various organizations are influencing others to follow in their footsteps because of the power and prestige that is associated with that position. What we often fail to see is that, <clears throat> excuse me, the greatest impact that can be passed from one individual to another is from a father to his family to affect someone in such a way that they want to see Jesus. <clears throat> the lesson that we can learn from Jesus as he engages in this dialogue with his disciples uh, is that we can experience the incredible impact when we do what God has instructed us to do. We can experience the incredible impact of a father's influence. There are a couple of things we want to share with you quickly. <clears throat> This text shows us, uh, I believe this text shows us this morning as we labor under this thought. Uh, if we are to be those incredible influences as fathers, he says there's a couple of things that need to happen. There are activities that are required. We'll see this in verses 13 through 16 and 8. Then he says, once uh, we engage in the required activities, there are uh, achievements that come as a result. Uh, as we try to talk through this, this thought this morning, the incredible impact of a father's influence. Matthew chapter 5 and the two chapters that follow it are commonly referred to as the sermon <clears throat> on the mount. Jesus, after uh, he is baptized by John the Baptist and uh, in chapter 3, he is then led into the wilderness and tempted of Satan in chapter 4. Now, here in chapter 5, he engages in this dialogue with his disciples regarding practical principles for Christian living. So Jesus begins this sermon not with an attack on the scribes and Pharisees because uh, they taught that righteousness was an external thing. Uh, the obeying or rules of regulations, praying uh, and giving. You remember the scribes and Pharisees were known for walking around uh, being able to quote commandments verbatim. They walked around with the tablets. They, they walked around with uh, phylacteries on their robes, their long tassels. Uh, they wanted to be no, they, they wanted to be seen. They thought righteousness was an external uh, thing. But what, what, what Jesus was trying uh, to get them to understand and Christian period that character comes from within and not without. <clears throat> An attitude ought to be uh, displayed from within. A Christian attitude ought to be displayed from within. And it ain't just about uh, what all you see on the outside. And so he gives a descriptive picture of what uh, that looks like. And beginning in verse 3, First word that he utters is blessed. The Latin word for blessed is beatus, from which we get the word beatitude. And it essentially means happy. Uh, 
joyous. It is an inner satisfaction and sufficiency uh, that does not depend on outward circumstances. Uh, even when stuff on the outside of me is haywire uh, and hectic, the inside of me are still be blessed. Even when stuff on the outside of me uh, is just uh, preserved, uh, the inside of me uh, are still strive to have it together. So in verse 3, he shows us an attitude toward ourselves. Bless are the poor uh, in spirit, an attitude of humility. In verses 4 through 6, he shows us our attitude towards sin. Bless are they that mourn. Uh, he says, sin ought to cause us to grieve and long for uh, spiritual uh, blessedness. Losing the little one, death, on it's not the only thing that causes us, or should not be the only thing that causes us grief. Sin all causes us to grieve. Then in verses 7 to 9, it shows us our attitude toward the Lord. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, because we have been shown mercy. We in turn ought to show mercy to others. Uh, and then in verses 10 through 12, he shows us our attitude toward the world. He says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What do you say? Uh, for doing right. Uh, right will come back. Uh, but now, you know, when you suffer for doing wrong, you, you get what you deserve. But when you suffer for doing right, right uh, will come back to you. And the end result is that heaven will be your own. Now that Jesus has informed us of the blessed attitude in him, he now moves to outward impact. Jesus says to those to whom he was preaching, you ought to be an influence. A, a contributing component that results in success are good and in particular fathers in your family uh, and to the rest of the world uh, you because of your inward righteousness that ought to be an outward impact on your family and the world so the first thing he does is to show us who we are. And by so doing, it implies that there are activities that are required. He said, beginning in verse 13, ye are. Shows us who we are. You are Christians. Fathers. You are the salt of the earth. A direct and descriptive state. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salty? It is this for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Salt does something. So, in, in, in comparing uh, the Christian to salt, he, he tells us that there are some activities that are required for us as Christians because we are salt. There is something that we have been called by God to do. That is an activity that is required. Salt does something. Salt does not just sit in the salt chair. Uh, and if food is to be seasoned, there's something uh, that has to be done by salt. Salt is a seasoning agent. Salt is a healing agent. Uh, sodium chloride uh, in salt causes impurities to, to move out of the body uh, when it comes in contact with uh, when you are sore. Uh, you put Epsom salt in your water. Salt is a, salt does something. In scripture, under the old law, salt was used as an emblem uh, uh, 
of impurity, uh, of impurity rather, and incorruption when sacrifices were offered to God. Leviticus 2.13, an area of nation uh, of thy meat offering, shalt thou, thou season with salt, neither shalt thou suffer the salt uh, of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. Uh, with all thy offerings, thou shalt offer salt. Salt was used to symbolize a, a binding covenant between uh, God and man and, and agreements between uh, men. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 13, the verse is 5. Ought ye uh, not to know uh, that the Lord God of Israel uh, gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever? Even to him and to his sons, how? By a covenant of salt. When an agreement was uh, was made, when you went into an agreement with another person or uh, with God, uh, even in, in today's society, when, 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 when marriages take place, uh, the, the, the bride and groom will often enter or engage in what's known uh, uh, as, as a salt covenant. Uh, there's a pouring of uh, salt from individual containers into one container. And what that has to do with when you enter into a salt covenant and an agreement uh, with another person, that means before you can break that covenant, before you can break that agreement, in order to dissolve it, you got to go into that one container and find your soul and separate it from another person's soul before you can dissolve up their agreement. Shrek, when you enter into a covenant of salt, young folk, when you get mad, uh, when you do a salt covenant, make sure you plan to don't stay in there. Because until you can find your soul, And separated from the other person's soul. Yeah. <laughs> and in the text, the word salt symbolizes the condition and character of a believer uh, or of a Christian. And what Jesus says to us is that if the inward attitude is right, there ought to be an outward activity of spiritual salt that impacts and influences this. Those around us, fathers, uh, you ought to be an enemy for your family when they're hurt. Fathers ought to be peacemakers uh, in the midst of problems. Fathers ought to be able to speak uh, encouraging words uh, for the wounded uh, because his speech is uh, rightly season. Fathers ought to carry the pure doctrine of the gospel of Christ that purifies the hearts of men. Colossians chapter 4 the verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt that you may know how we ought to answer every man. As salt Christians and especially fathers should have an impact uh, an influence on society. But now here's the problem. If the soul has lost its safety, if it has become, uh, if salt has become flat and tasteless, insipid is the idea, uh, is the word. Uh, he says, what good is it other than to be trampled under the foot of me. God looks at us with contempt and scorn when as salt, this is the idea of the text, when as salt, when he has called us to be salt, the salt of the earth, and fathers, uh, when we are to be the salt for our families, when we are to be that incredible uh, Influence and have an incredible uh, impact. When we become tasteless and insipid, Jesus says, salt is good, but nothing other than to be thrown.
brought out and trampled under the foot of me. Because we have not engaged in the required activity to ensure that our soul keeps its strength, keeps its taste, we have become of no use what the text says. We have become of no use to God and to society. Fathers, we are always trying to make sure uh, that as fathers, uh, that as the salt of the earth and of our families, uh, we keep taste in our life. Uh, the sad truth is that many Christians and many fathers, rather than impacting and being a faithful influence in the families and in the world, have become involved with the world. We look and act like everybody else instead of being salt. We act and salt. Instead of trying to teach our children right, we join in with them. You heard the situation. I let the old school year last year. Children got in the fight over here at the library, uh, and, and, and the child went home, and the daddy come back to you. What kind of sense they make? What kind of example? That's not being impactful as a father. You are supposed to be soft. To this another situation. Running an ad to the can in the flames. No, no, no. God has called on us as fathers to engage uh, in required activities as Christians that will help us to be the salt that He has called us to be as fathers. But then He says in verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before me. The other piece of the activity, other than being salt, is being a light. Light is used to eliminate. When you walk into a dark room, the first thing you do is hit the light switch. Because any rational thinking person is not going to try to walk around in the dark. I don't care how familiar you are uh, with your surroundings, uh, in your house or wherever. Uh, if it's dark, you're going to put the light on. Because uh, you, you need to be able to see. Uh, you don't want to stumble around uh, in the dark. Uh, when you are uh, in your car, uh, as soon as it gets dark, uh, you turn on the lights. Uh, and, and some cars are put nowadays uh, with automatic lights. As soon as it gets dark, the lights come on. Because, you know, even though I've seen some folks get milked, riding down the street at night with no lights on. That ain't smart. Lighthouses used to be used in many other coastal cities to serve as a beacon or navigational tool for ships uh, traveling on the sea to guide them safely uh, to the shore. And what Jesus says is that just as physical light is used to light the way of God has uh, as Christians and particularly as fathers, let your light shine among men. And if ever there was a time, Lord Jesus, if ever there was a time for faithful fathers to shine their lights, it's right now. We live in a dark and dismal world. Families are in darkness. Civil authorities are in darkness. Our communities are in darkness. The hearts of men are in darkness. But Jesus has charged the Christian uh, to be a light and particularly fathers. 
Because he has given us a responsibility as being the head of the family. So goes the family. So goes the church. So goes the family. So goes the rest of the world. If I Christian and fathers to be a light that leads a dark society into the marvelous light. Isaiah chapter 60, the verses are one through three. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, uh, and gross darkness. Uh, the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, uh, and kings uh, to the brightness of thy rising. God expects that to be done through his people. We are the lights that he calls on uh, to arise. If, if, if we want our families uh, and the world to experience the incredible impact of the Father's influence. Fathers, I encourage you that there are some activities that are required of us to be faithful fathers. If we're going to have an incredible impact to make a difference, there are some things that are required. We got to be salt and we got to be light. Yeah. Here's what happens when that, when that takes place. If we are successful and faithful in engaging in the requirements, then there are achievements that come as a result. He says in verse 16b, he says, part A, let your light so shine among me. Part B of verse 16 says, wow, that they may see your good works <clears throat> and glorify your Father. Notice the Bible. See, if you read that too fast, you miss it. He said that they may, and, and, and the Christian, uh, not only the Father, but every Christian, uh, need, need, need to watch this. Uh, Let your light so shine on me. Why? That they may see your good works. And glorify who? Your Father. Not you. The day may glorify your. When we engage in the required activities, families, children, the world. Jesus unto good works, which 
God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Titus chapter 2, the verse 7, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptedness, gravity, and sincerity. First Peter chapter 2, the verse 12, Having your conscience honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evil do it, they may by your good works, which they should behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Fathers, when we engage in the required activities, what is accomplished is good with us. God is glorified. And so what I want to challenge our fathers with on this father's day. Don't just, don't just say it, but show it. Don't just proclaim, but demonstrate. Don't just proclaim, uh, but prove. When your daughter seeks her husband, the diamond man that she is looking for ought to be demonstrated by her dad. When your son is looking for a wife, he ought to know how to treat her because he saw the man of the house modeling by how he treated his mom. Whether we realize it or not, we are influencing somebody somewhere, either in a positive way or a negative way. Fathers, we need you. We need you. In the home, we need you uh, to be faithful fathers. We need you to be impactful. Uh, we need you to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, because our families are hurting. The society is hurting because our families are hurting. So my encouragement, my charge to our fathers today, let be those incredible fathers who will have an incredible impact on the family. I close with this story. A young man who was to be sentenced to penitentiary. The judge had known him from childhood, for he was well acquainted with his father, a famous legal scholar and the author of an enthusy, uh, active study entitled The Law of Trust. Do you remember your father? And so he asked the young man, Do you remember your father? He says, It's funny, the young man, I remember him well. Then trying to probe the offender's conscience, the judge said, as you are about to be sentenced, and as you think of your wonderful dad, what do you remember most clearly about him? That was the fault. Then the judge received an answer he had not expected. The young man said, I remember when I went to him for advice. He looked up at me from the book he was writing and said, run along, boy, I'm busy. When I went to him for companionship, he Turn me away, saying, run along, son, the book must be finished. Your Honor, you remember him as a great lawyer. I remember him as a law school. The magistrate sighed and muttered to himself. 
finished the book. But he lost his book. What an all too familiar story. In our own culture, in our communities, sons and daughters being lost because daddy is either not there or don't have time. But now, here's the other piece of this of the story that, that you've missed if you read it too fast. Fathers, listen. You can be at the house and still be out. Because they didn't have a father. 
to help them. And so somebody, they, they have a desire, that, but somebody got to show them. And I pray that, that, that God will. One of these days, bless us is to develop some ministry that will not only bless our men in permanent, but will bless this, this community, this financial community, particularly from the standpoint of being fathers. I thank God for these men who are here, for these uh, loving fathers who have had and is having an incredible impact and influence as faithful fathers. On their hands. And so on today, if you are a child, uh, you are a grandchild, if you are a wife, uh, and if you got a man uh, who, who is being a good father, and maybe uh, for some of us, daddy uh, is already going on, but he was such an impactful influence in your life, uh, and, and because of what he did for you, made your life better. You're trying to imitate him because he imitated Christ. Stand on your feet. Man. Give these men, these fathers, these incredible fathers around us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
trying to emulate Christ before you. And you've seen the example of good works. Maybe the greatest gift you can give today is saying yes to Jesus. A man that good news, the gospel of how Jesus died for your sins and for mine. How you were buried in a borrowed tomb. Stayed there for three days, but early Sunday morning. Got up with all power in his hand. He sits at the right hand of the Father, pleading for you and for me. He wants you to be saved. You ought to do that today. You ought to say yes. You do that by hearing the gospel. According to Romans 10 17, leaving that same gospel. According to Hebrews chapter 11, the verse is 6. Repenting, changing your mind about how you feel about Christ. And Thing in the world, turn from the way from the world to the way of God. It's called repentance. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Confessing Christ to be the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That great confession that the unit gave uh, in Acts chapter 8. Jesus has a desire for you to make that same confession today. When you put him on in baptism. Be baptized. Acts 2 38 for the remission of your sins. Get up out of that water, a brand new creature, brand new creation. Be faithful unto death, and God will give you a friend. When you leave here today, perhaps as a child or a, uh, a spouse whose family, perhaps, uh, Christians, and uh, you want to be that incredible impact and influence. In your family. Maybe rather than them giving you a gift today, maybe you can give them a gift by saying yes to you. You ought to go. If you need prayer, you need to remain standing for prayer, please. You can remain standing where you are. If you need special prayer, you need to come down where you are. Make your request. You bid you do so. And I have a Watch your response as we stand and sing. Say yes, sir. I am learning. Come on. Learning to Say yes. Sing. Thank you so much.
for making Father's Day even more meaningful because if you are if you're a father here today, this message should have kept you. Especially as a Christian father. Should have kept you to continue your Christian journey as a godly father. Because the activity is required, as Brother Mike said. Character comes from within. God gave us the tool to build Christian character. That's the Bible. That's why we have to go in there. That's what Brother Mike did today. He exegeted the scriptures from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. It says, Fathers ought to be a healing agent for their family. You ought to be able to come to your father anytime to get the help that you need for the family. Then he says the uh, achievement that comes as a result of that is God will be glorified. When the father knows his role in the family, that makes the family great. Thank you so much for that for such a wonderful message on this morning. We have those who have responded to the invitation here, and we have those in the person of uh, Sister Xavier Reed. She says, please pray for me in my prayer tongue for traveling grace as we will be traveling, uh, as we will be leaving the country for a few weeks. Pray for Brianna that she will be safe and that she will be able to survive without me. <laughs> Certainly going to pray to that here. <laughs> Sister Bobby Harris says, I have sinned. I have asked God for forgiveness, to forgive me now, and I'm asking for the prayers of the church. Brother Robert White says, I want to thank the church for the prayer for my grandson. He's at home safe, and we ask that you please keep him in your prayers. Thank God for that. Also, I want to add, and Brother Jackson, this was my fault on this trip this morning, but I just want to make a note that uh, they're in the process of making the arrangement for the funeral. And so as we get more information, we will let you know. Uh, and perhaps the host of the funeral will be this Saturday. I mean, next Saturday, so next Saturday, you know, yeah, next Saturday, so. Um, so just please be in prayer for the children, family, because they will be trapped. And so just keep them in prayer as well. Let's go to God now as we, on behalf of all of these who are also standing in need of prayer, and we're going to go to God on their behalf now. Let us pray. A gracious Father in heaven, Father, we come now and thank you so much for this blessed privilege that we have because you didn't have to grant us another day. And not that anything that we've done to deserve it, but we recognize and we realize, Father, because you are God and you are good. Your mercy is yours for help. That you allow us, Father, to see this day without hurt, harm, or pain. Thank you for watching over us while we slept and you kept us safe. You kept harm at bay and thank you, Father, for bringing us to this place for the reason that we have come and that is to give you praise because you are worthy. We thank you, Father, so much for your son Jesus, whom you gave that through his death and obedience to his word. All mankind may have the right to the tree of life and everlasting salvation. Thank you, Father, that you've given us the ability to recognize, Father, that we have to have this salvation in Christ Jesus and allow us to be members of the church which he purchased with his precious blood. Thank you so much for Jesus. We come now, Father, thank you for this privilege and opportunity that we have to come to worship together. 
we glorify your name as we magnify your son, Father, as we edify one another. We thank you so much for this moment of worship that we have come. And we thank you so much, Father, for using your servant, Brother Michael Jackson, on this morning. Thank you for strengthening him, not only physically, Father, but mentally, that you give him the ability to go into this blessed old book, the Bible, and exegete the scriptures and find where it is written. He's able to share with your people in this place. Help us to build us up in the faith. Thank you so much for him. And thank you for his other wife, Sister G, and your family. And we ask, Father, that you just continue to bless them. And thank you for the relationship and the union that you have bound together in this place. As we are family, Father, our believers in this place, we ask that you just continue to bind us all together in love and peace and unity. Help us, Father, always to strive to build one another up and never tear one another down. We thank you so much, Father, for this privilege. We come now, Father, thanking you for this message on this morning. The incredible impact of a Father's influence. Thank you for these godly men who you have placed in this place. We ask, Father, that you would just continue to impact their lives through your word, your will, and your way. That they would have the influence on their families, Father, that would help them, Father, not only now, but in the years to come, generations to come. We continue to pass this word down, Father. We thank you for those who have been impacted by God the Father in this place. We thank you for the offspring, the children, and the grandchildren, and all of those, Father, who have been impacted by these men. We ask that you just continue to bless them and strengthen them, Father. We continue to move forward, Father. We ask that you would just continue to guide and help us to be the light that we need to be not only in our families, but in this community and throughout this city. That others may see our good work and glorify you in heaven, Father. We thank you so much for this opportunity that we have now to come on behalf of these who are standing in need of prayer. We ask, Father, that you bless them right where they are. You know the need, you know the concern, Father. Most of all, we know that you are able to bless, to impact their lives and in the areas where they need. So we ask, Father, that you meet them right where they are, where they need. We pray that whatever those things are in their lives, Father, that you will be able to bless them. We know that you will and you are able, but we ask that you would grant them the things that they need so they can continue to move forward. We come now on behalf of Sister Xavier Reed, who will be, her and her friend Tanya, who will be traveling out of the country, Father. We ask now that you please give them traveling grace. Give them a ride in mercy and pray that they all go well, Father, with them as they travel. Please keep them safe in their travel, and when they reach their destination, Father, please keep them safe in all things around them. They will be able to return at their point in time without hurt, harm, or danger. We ask, Father, that you will be with Brianna as well. You will watch over her, that you will continue to be with her, and keep us safe, Father, Mama, so that she will do those things, Father, that she needs to do, to stay safe, Father. And we as an extended family, Father, that we will continue to be there for her. We pray for Sister Bobby Harris, who has now come, and not that she has sinned. We ask, Father, that we pray for her now. We know that you have forgiven her, Father. And we ask now that you would strengthen her, Father. Strengthen her in the area for she weak, Father, that she continues to strive to hold on to your unchanging hand. Knowing that you are God, you are good, and most of all, you are able. So we ask that you would just continue to bless her. Father, we thank you for answering prayers on behalf of Brother Robert White. His grandson, who was found safely, has returned safely without her harm or danger. Thank you, Father, for watching over him and keeping him safe. Bless him now, Father, that he will show the responsibility, Father, of a young man who knows that he has family members around him that love and care about him, Father. That he will do the things that he would need to do, Father, to be responsible. And that he also will show the love that is shown to him, Father by letting his family member know what he is. And so we ask that you would just bless his family 
Thank you for the happy reunion, Father. We pray that all will continue to go well with him. We ask that you will be with Brother White as he continues to be an influence in his life. We pray that this young man will find the right way, the true and the proper way, Father, in his life. And we thank you, Father, for just thank you for just being so good to us. You give us everything that we need to sustain in this life day in and day out. And Father, we just ask that you just continue to watch over us. Keep us safe from harm and danger. Thank you so much for Jesus who makes it all possible. Our life livable, our burdens so bearable. Thank you so much for Jesus. Please forgive us of our sins as we truly turn. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we ask and give thanks always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus rose with power and in his hand.
Some guys gonna be shocked right there. We got light. We got health and strength. We got food. We got a roof over our heads. We're able to move about. We got a heavenly father. It impacts and influences us each and every day. And the way that we give should show you just how much we love. The way we give, we ought to give in a manner that gives him thanks and appreciation for how he influences our lives. Let's be mindful of that today. Uh, as we give, first of all, we, we commend you for your giving efforts. Uh, we continue to do well. Uh, we, we, uh, we continue to do well. Uh, God has blessed us. He's, he's, done, he's doing great things in the life of this church. Let's continue to be the faithful students uh, that He has called uh, all of us to be in this place. Amen. Let's pray. The child God, our Father, we're so thankful for again this blessed privilege that you have given it to us uh, to worship you at the point of giving. We thank you, Father, for uh, being our Father, for the incredible, impactful influence that you have on our lives each and every day. Help us to give back to you in a manner that shows you how much we love and appreciate you for what you continue to do for us without waver, unconditionally. Even when we don't deserve it, you continue to bless and love us anyway. Thank you. Father, I pray is that the receiving of these, these funds be used with wisdom, prudence, and God. As we seek uh, to do kingdom business in this white Haven community, uh, in this city of Memphis, and all in the world, as I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let's be able to say. Amen. Website, and you can see any announcements that we don't give on Sundays that uh, that may be posted there. Uh, so I do have something here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. This is from <laughs> Sister L. Freedom Four, and she says, "I want the Boulevard family." Family to help me wish my king, my BFF, and my honey -o a very happy birthday and a happy Father's Day to my baby daddy.
to the man that you worship with us uh, on this day. Uh, we, you honored us by your presence. There are a number of places you could have gone. You chose to be a boulevard. And for that, we thank you because after all, the boulevard is the place of belonging. It leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we are thankful that you are here. To those who are worshiping with us virtually, our prayer is that we will soon see you in person. So we might be able to fellowship with you in person. To those who are worshiping with us in person, if you're visiting, we certainly want to recognize you. Uh, if you're here today, if you, if you feel comfortable, like stand, let us know who you are and where you're from. We want to give you that privilege. Other than those to my right, you visit. You visit this morning. All right, then to my left. All right. To all my visitors, thank you so much for being here. Please come back and be with us again. Let me just quickly uh, thank the Earl Wilson Scholarship Committee uh, for an incredible banquet on yesterday. Uh, outstanding uh, job uh, as we honor our high school seniors, uh, which this year is uh, Sam uh, McDowell, and so uh, we want to thank the scholarship. Amen. <laughs> and Sam, Sam, a big man. And amen. We, we are also going to be applying for uh, the Gentry Scholarship uh, because we have some funds uh, that the uh, Gentry uh, family has uh, provided a scholarship fund as well. So he's going to be applying for that uh, as well. But we thank God for Sam. Uh, and again, good job to the committee. Wonderful program uh, on yesterday virtually. Uh, outstanding job by Brother Joshua Davis. I guess speaking just wonderful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful thing uh, on yesterday. And then let me just remind you, we've been engaged in our age-specific meetings uh, for our various age groups, uh, senior saints, 62 and above, 62 and above. Your meeting will take place Thursday, June 30th, Thursday, June 30th, mark your calendar, senior saints, 62 and above, Thursday, June 30th. 7 p.m. will be your meeting. This will be a Zoom meeting. Uh, we'll not be on Facebook Live because if you want to participate, you have to log in to Zoom. So it will not be on, on Facebook Live. So mark your calendars for that day. Uh, this will be your, your age-specific meeting. And then, as we mentioned today, is Father's Day. And we thank God for all these meetings. God has blessed us with as fathers here. And as always, Sister G and I, uh, we try to always uh, do just a little something to recognize not only our mothers, uh, but our fathers uh, as well. And so today, uh, we have just small tokens uh, of our appreciation from Sister G and I to the Boulevard. Uh, just to say thank you, we love you, Appreciate you. We hope uh, that there's something that you will enjoy and use. We try to give you something that you can use. Uh, and so we trust that you will uh, enjoy these, uh, how you uh, may use them. If all of the fathers, uh, Boulevard Father, your father here at the Boulevard, if you will stand, all of our Boulevard Father. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We thank God for you, and they're going to be coming around with these small tokens of our appreciation uh, to share with you, just to say thank you. We love you, and we, we appreciate you. Keep on being those. Incredible, influential fathers who are impacting your families in a, in a powerful way. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Get 
some of our young men uh, to help, uh, help us out, please. Passing some of these out. Surgeries on this week, Heavenly Father. Be with them and be with the doctors. Hands that will be 
working on we pray for the father that you bless them those are the special uh, need uh, in terms of prayer for its recovery pray heavenly father you restore them of the regional portion of health and strength we pray heavenly father for uh, the seniors we pray heavenly father that you continue to bless them heavenly father we ask that you continue to bless us all and touch us all those that are fathers we pray heavenly father we may be better examples that we may be able to lead lost souls unto you we be able to lead our homes therefore providing uh, and encouraging the growth of the church and the kingdom we pray heavenly father as we depart from here on this morning that we pray that we go out and depart that our, we come with our spirits lifted and our lands and our hearts changed in how we may have we ask these and other blessings in christ's name all right, I have the dismissal portion in terms of how we're dismissing. We're still COVID protocol. As a matter of fact, Shelby County is now listed as high. So uh, let us continue to remember.